Hi and welcome to this performance view of the WatchGuard T80. So I just want to put a few things down as a foundation. If you've watched a whole bunch of my other videos, I'm probably just repeating myself here. Um, we have a one gig internet connection. It's not an MBN extension. It's a one to one contended. It's our connection. We have around about two kilometers of pulled fiber directly to this property. Um, it's from Exitel. Um, so we know that we can get a true one gig on this. So our one gig is connected to a Ubiquiti Edge Router 12, which comfortably does one gig. Look, when we do a speed test, um, which I'll show you in a moment, you're never going to get that one gig because we're on a one gig bearer. So one gig on one gig isn't technically possible. Maybe if I had a larger bearer, um, different frame size, we might be able to um, make that a little bit closer. But therefore, when I'm doing speed tests, I'm looking for the high 800s, early 900s to give us a true idea. Obviously, I'm testing with speed test servers, so it's on the quality of that. I'm in Brisbane, so I'm going to lose a little bit um, of quality as well to some of the servers that are local to me. All right, so that is probably the foundation. This is not a Mircom test. I've not got $20,000 of testing equipment here. This is a test that you can do in your office or at home, and what a lot of our customers do when they get this unit and go, well, does it actually do what I've bought it for? So I want to show you where we think this positions and how well this is going to work for you. So like I said, this is a WatchGuard T80. It's the desktop um, firewall. It's the top of the de current desktop range, published to do around about a gig. Um, I don't think it'll do a gig with the security services running on it, but I do think this is a fantastically positioned um, box to get you in the right position. You'll see the speeds in a little bit as we test them for maybe 40 to 50 users um, on a fast internet connection. So let's just fuel up a um, speed test now for ourselves. Um, just to give ourselves an idea of what we should get. Um, I will just show you this, then I'll show you what I've got turned off. I literally got out of the box and I've turned all the firewall rules off. So we're looking at that high 800s, like I said. Um, it's in the evening when I'm doing this, so there's a little bit more latency around with people using the test servers. But we're clocking close to 900 megasecond on this. Um, we'll maybe do one more test in a moment just to convince ourselves how that's actually going. But I'd be comfortable to say this will sit on a one gig connection and as a router it's pretty much going to give you what you have for a gig on a gig. It's going to give you those high 800s to early 900s which is really all you're actually going to get in a speed test. So you can see it's now just clipping over the 900 megaseconds. So a pretty good result from that point of view. Let's just let it click that so you can see it 908 megasecond. So let's just have a look what I've done in here. We're running with just one or two firewall rules. Got FTP up there, not that it's really relevant. I've turned off HTTP and HTTPS, and we've got ping as a rule in there, and we've got outgoing um, UDP, TCP. So many of the vendors, WatchGuard, Fortinet, Sophos, use the same way of doing this. You define a firewall rule, and then on the firewall rule, you define what um, security services that you want running on it. That gives you some versatility because you can uh, allow some maybe uh, of these rules to run slower because you want higher intensity checks on them. Um, you can change them around in their priority and those type of things as well. I'm just going to concentrate with UDP TCP because that's going to catch everything for us. So it should be inspecting all the traffic that goes through there. We will just touch on HTTPS um, filtering a little bit later on um, in this video. But let's just um, crack on. And let's just turn on some of these security services as we go. All right, so some of these are not in place at the moment. Um, so we can turn on um, our global um, set for application control. Application control, um, as you can see, just we're using the standard um, setup here, but we can configure this. Do watch my other videos on how to secure your watch guard um, in like 20, 30 minutes. Um, but we're just going to use the global policy, which is stopping proxies, bypasses, and crypto, and a, a few other things that are going on that are applications that we really wouldn't expect to be running on our network. So you can see we've applied this policy to the global rule. So we're just going to hit our go button. We're looking for those high 800s, 900s. We're expecting that we shouldn't get any real drop off. Um, yeah, we're not really got any real drop off there by turning that on. We shouldn't. That's not really a labor intensive security. Um, service. So as you can see, let's just uh, 905. We're pretty good at that point. All right. So APT blocker, we will come back to in a minute. Uh, botnet detection. Let's turn on botnet detection. What's this doing? This is going to 
look for our outbound traffic and see if it's talking to a command server. Again, this should be pretty labor unintensive. Um, and so we should be seeing the top 800s or so as we go through. Shouldn't have anything because it's literally looking for a yes or no. It's not having to inspect any packets. Um, and again, we're hitting there the high 800s, um, early 900s. So it really has not made any uh, change whatsoever. All right, so let's move on to some of the things that I would expect to give us a little bit more of an issue. So let's have a look at gateway antivirus, for instance. Um, at the moment, gateway antivirus uh, can be turned on our HTTP proxy, um, and it can allow us to look at just the standard. So again, gateway antivirus here on a watch guard is just looking at the standard ports. It's not something that you just generally put on a UDP um, TCP connection. So this is not going to make any difference to us currently because our speed test is actually running in HTTPS. But we can just complete it and just go, okay, well, we are actually interested in scanning any of these, but unfortunately, we're not using any of those in this speed test. So it's not really going to make much difference to us at this time. What I might go and do is turn on the HTTP um, policy um, just so that it does at least click in place uh, somewhere on here. As you can see, it's created a bunch of policies um, to go. But let's go and just turn on our uh, HTTP uh, proxy policy here. Uh, turn that on and save this. We'll run a speed test, but this isn't really going to make any difference for what we uh, need to at this stage. Um, because it's not something that we're actually going to be able to check through this speed test. Because like I said, the speed test is running on port 8080. So it's circumnavigating a whole bunch of these. It's not in HTTP, and it's not HTTPS. It's being caught by this UDP rule here at the bottom. So geolocation, we're not going to worry about geolocation. We can turn it on. Um, this is obviously actually not going to make any significant difference. Um, we can just put it on our outgoing rule if we want to. Uh, select Action Global. Um, this is not going to make real any an evidence to this. Again, it's a bit like the botnet. This is um, going, uh, you're not allowed to this site or not allowed away from this other site. So it's probably not really worth me doing anything, although for consistency's sake, I will show you um, having turned that on. All right, again, high 800s, nothing really there to write home about. Like I said, I wasn't expecting anything to happen. Intelligent AV. All right, now we're going to turn on some multiple scanning engines. But remembering our AV is only running on our HTTP and HTTPS. So maybe we'll go and turn our HTTPS rule on. Um, now, we haven't got a trusted certificate here. Um, so we would get normally some certificate errors at this point because it's operating as a man in the middle, it's starting to encrypt and uh, decrypt and re-encrypt. So we always will see performance drop when we're looking at HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Again, speed test circumnavigates this because it's using um, uh, port 8080. So we generally don't see a drop off in a speed test when we turn this on. But you do need to be aware that if you've enabled um, inspection with HTTPS here, then you're obviously going to need to install a trusted certificate um, on each of your machines. And then what happens is your machine talks to the firewall, the firewall talks to the encrypted site. So it's having to do all this encryption and unencryption. And as a result, um, you will get a performance drop. You'll probably get a performance drop, I would think, of maybe two thirds. I would see this box probably running at about 300 megasecond, maybe 250 megasecond when it doing that. But remember, you've got some users who are just browsing a web page and others that are downloading. They probably won't notice that it takes a couple of extra seconds. It's still making use of your line, but maybe the box is just not doing that full throughput. And this is where the balance becomes of cost against performance. All right, so let's have a look at our other subscription services. Um, so we'd already talked about Gateway AV, um, and that's actually running Intelligent AV. Now we're going to move to Intrusion Prevention. This is a very interesting one, all right, because this will have an effect, because it's going to be looking across all of our policies and all of our proxies. So when we enable this, I would think that we're going to see a performance degrade. Why? Because every packet is now no longer trusted. So now you can see we see a massive drop down here. This is still not, this is not in the high 800s. This is now in the high 300s. This is becoming more consistent to check. 
Why? Because we are doing a full scan. We are checking it in all the protocols. We have actually chosen here to check it in outbound or in outgoing. If I was to turn it off from outgoing, I would expect there to be a performance increase because it's only going to be running in the proxies that it knows about. So maybe let's just try this and see whether it does make any difference. We we'll give the unit a moment just to reset itself. All right, and then let's try this speed test again. There we go, we're back up. Why? Because my speed test is running on port 8080. It is not caught by an HTTP proxy. It's not caught by an HTTPS proxy. It's only caught by the one firewall rule that we have. The firewall rule that we have is UDP TCP or TCP UDP any. And that is checking every protocol, every port, every stream that's going through. So again, you could take that and you could maybe say, I'm not really worried about doing intrusion prevention on all of those. I personally would be. All right, because those are all the ports and the protocols you don't know about. These ones you do know about, HTTP and HTTPS. It's the stuff that's on your network that you might not know about that you want to protect. So it's trying to find a balance. And if there's some things you need to perform, increase. So for instance, maybe you had a, a download from an FTT, FTP site. What you could do is you could write a firewall rule that was higher up this list, like this FTP proxy one, that said if the internal user is collecting from this site. Don't do intrusion prevention on this uh, on this download because we know it's a trusted site. And therefore, they would get the speed boost. They'd be able to see your whole one gig line. So you can balance this out to get the best result that you want to. So let's just go back and look at our intrusion prevention, all right? Let's put ourselves back. Let's turn this back in place in here um, on enabled. All right, and then maybe let's switch this over to fast scan. So we're now making some assumptions about what those packets are and how important they are to be checked. And we should see a medium balance here um, between giving us some intrusion prevention and you can see we're back up to the, the high 800s again. So we're running a fast scan in what's happening. All right, so we could have, for instance, used our exceptions. We could have put some signatures in there we wanted to exclude, or like I said, we could have used the firewall rules to exclude what um, things we don't want to inspect anymore that make it faster. All right, so I'm gonna just leave this now um, on full scan because I think it probably is gonna, there's not a lot much more here that I can actually turn on that's gonna create any slowness. All right, we've got reputation enabled defense, this really is not going to make much difference to the performance because again, it's just a database checkup. We've got web blocker. All right, web blocker might have a little bit of um, effect, all right, depending on what categories we want to choose and what categories we want um, to block. All right, we've set up some policies on here. Um, we will want it to uh, apply uh, to some places that we've set these up exactly. All right, again, not going to expect there to be a dramatic difference because this is just checking up against a database. But this is our issue. You would have heard me talk about this on other videos. Remember, the biggest issue that we generally face as IT security people or consultants is actually the object that's between the chair and the keyboard. It is the person, it is the user. They are the ones that go, oh, I've got a bank statement says that I, my banks need to change my details or I've suddenly got to change this password when I click the link. Content filtering has gone from blocking pornography 20 years ago to going actually we need to block sites that are already known to be compromised or going to allow a user in our business or uh, a child in our house to click on a link that they shouldn't do and give us a level of additional protection that we wouldn't always get. So that's what web blockers is there for. But it's generally not gonna see a huge difference. Like I said, you will see a difference in HTTPS um, because it's gonna to have to unencrypt it and re-encrypt it. All right, so again, we're getting a more favorable result. Um, we're getting into that 500 space. We do have the um, blocker, the intrusion prevention turning turned on. We can see that we're not checking some of the uploads, um, but we are checking more of the downloads. So let's run this again. So again, we're finding a balance here of what this unit will perform. So I would comfortably find that this unit, if somebody said to me, I want to put this unit on a 500 meg connection and I've got 40 or 50 users or less, then this is where I would fit the T80. If you've got a one gig internet connection, 
This box will by far do that in routing. It will do it until you turn intrusion prevention on, which you really need to have on. Um, and then you've just got to be happy of going, well, actually, for some things, downloads and stuff like that, I will only get 500 meg a second. But that's a pretty good download speed. You can then add in some firewall rules that can allow you to download from trusted sites at a faster speed, um, and you'd find a right balance that was there. So hopefully this has been useful. This is a performance review of the WatchGuard T80. Hey, why not hop over to our uh, YouTube channel? You're going to find loads more performance reviews, how to secure your WatchGuard in like 20 minutes. Um, so I step you through all the different um, options there to make your WatchGuard uh, secure. And we've got box openings on networking, firewalling, and wireless items. So do subscribe and stay up to date. Leave me comments. I'm not an expert at this. I've loved doing this for the last 25 years or so that I've been in the security field. Um, and I love to just be able to show what a unit can do so you can balance up the right purchase um, for your needs. But hopefully you can see this unit is going to sit you at about 500 meg a second with all of those main services turned on and those firewall rules in place. Hopefully that's been useful. My name is Paul.